Welcome. It's the August 15th City Council meeting. I'm Gina Louise Shara. I'll be presiding this evening. I want to announce that we're being audio and video recorded. Um, and we're going to start as we always do with public comment. So I have a sign up sheet. Anyone who didn't sign up, I'm going to go through these names first and then um, I will ask if there's anyone else who would like to speak in public comment. Um, when you come up, please state your name and the city or town that you're from. And you'll have three minutes. There'll be a clock there, so please try and keep it to three minutes. If you get to three minutes and you still have more to say, if you could just wrap it up in the next line or two after you hear that uh, sound. And um, one unusual thing is that we don't respond. So it's your time to speak to us. We don't respond at all, but we are listening, I promise. So <clears throat> I'm going to call up the first name, which is Kristen Beatty or Beatty. Yeah, oh, I saw. Yeah, there are kind of two funny carrots here. So, so it's Kristen and say your name. Moses Flores Arroyo. Okay. Um, I supposed to. You can just leave that there. Nope, it'll capture your voice. All right, great. All right, well, um, my name is Kristen Beatty and this is Moises Flores. Um, we're with a group that's trying to run a ballot measure to reduce the risk of technology. Um, and one of the issues that we're concerned about is all the small cell towers which are being put into town. Um, at the moment, um, the FCC has promoted all the wireless expansion. So they began intensive auctions in 2016 to increase the amount of spectrum. In 2018, they preempted <coughs> the, the local zoning control for small cell towers. These small cell towers are, pl are placed only a few hundred feet apart in, fr in front yards, which drastically increases exposure. In Boston, they already have 300, but they're expanding that because they want to go um, into what's called 5G. The FCC is now proposing to allow either the landlords or the renters to install commercial antennas for off-site users on their homes without a permit, without registration, without the permission of either the renter and the, the, the landlord together, which allows exemption of any oversight. On top of that, when they install these antennas on utility poles, they can be 90 pounds for the equipment, which means that it's a hazard also that they could fall over. So there are a couple other countries who are trying to halt 5G. Brussels, Switzerland, France, Israel, Cyprus have all taken action to either reduce the exposure or halt 5G. And the reason is, is because there is controversy on the issue, but basically um, <coughs> scientists who are immersed in the issue are concerned that there are huge health impacts. So the IARC, the International Agency for research on cancer, they actually um, in 2011 classified wireless as a group to be possible human carcinogen. That was 30 independent scientists. And after that, those scientists have all begun calling out, asking for more um, change on this I issue <coughs> for a, a higher classification. Um, so, there's actually been um, so much of the research out there is very concerning in that it shows that it could possibly impact your ability to have a child, your IQ, your memory, all these things. So what I'm asking you to do is to please consider passing a resolution in order to Okay, you can just finish oh, what okay. you're saying. That's perfect. just um, oh, in that. order to consider um, supporting the legislation in the state house that's out there, asking to restrict the rollout, and also I'm asking that you um, adopt a resolution that is updated because the FCC has changed so many of their rules. So on the website for the group, which is called Last Tree Laws. Um, there's under town, there's a whole bunch of ordinances there, and I try to keep it updated. So 
There's an ordinance for Pittsfield that has to be updated, but it's about a year old. There's an ordinance for um, for Burlington that's about a year old that has to be updated, but I guess that's it. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, could you also, just for our record, could you tell us your city or town? Holyoke. Thank you. Um, Moses, and so just so you know, you have three minutes too. If you would like to now speak, you're welcome to. We're together, so okay. whatever needs to be. Okay. Um, okay, well, we thank you. All right, um, I just have these papers here for you, and um, I'd just like to add that we have been trying for about two years to pass the, the legislation. Um, we have asked them to r r register towers, to reduce exposures in public schools because in public schools they have to in order to have each kid have the one to one laptop use they have to use industrial strength r routers and those are very powerful it's a very strong exposure so we asked for them to create school committees to address that to try to reduce the exposure um, so all that legislation is online but we know that, like I've been told, we have to f have support from people. We can't, like I can't just go and talk there on my own. Um, there are people in Concord, there are people in Ashland, there are people all over, but they, they need help. Well, thank you for coming and talking to us and thank you yeah. for these little tidbits into the thank record. You. Thank you. <coughs> okay, next up, I have Serafina Foreman. Oh, and and Willa Sipple, absolutely. Yeah, yeah tag teaming tonight. It's great. So could you just state your name and your city or town, please? Yeah. So I'm Willa Sipple. I live in Florence. I'm Sarah Fina Borman, and I live in Northampton. Yeah. And we, the two of us, are the co-coordinators of the Sunrise Northampton um, <coughs> Hub, which is part of the National <laughs> Sunrise Movement. Yeah. <laughs> An organization of young people uniting um, to end the climate crisis. Yeah, and um, we're here to like talk to you about why you should vote um, to pass the resolution of the municipal Green New Deal. Yeah. So I cannot imagine a world where the climate catastrophe was not a constant threat, as I have never lived in one. For my generation, the idea that climate, ch climate change could put an end to life as we know it is a reality. Um, just look at the climate strikes that our, us <laughs> and our fellow classmates have participated in one outside of City Hall where we had over 100 students holding signs that read Green New Deal for Northampton. The future generation cares. Yes, we only have 10 years left until we, uh, we may or may not have set off an irreversible chain of events leading to our own extinction. Um, generations before us have failed, but we deserve a future. So. Um, as we see wildfires that are sweeping across the country, um, droughts and, uh, with increased frequency, hurricanes and flooding, um, which present dramatic dangers, and air quality um, that is declining, which is leading to extreme health risks. Um, we know we need to take action on this climate crisis. And here in Northampton, we are lucky because we have a community who understands these issues and fights for its solutions and um, elected officials that will also support us. Um, Northampton has long been known to be a champion on um, innovative and progressive climate policy. Um, and it's also important to recognize that climate change disproportionately affects people of color, low-income people, and the elderly and other disenfranchised groups. Environmental racism is a reality that climate change hits hardest on those who've contributed to, the le contributed to it the least, and these people are marginalized communities such as people of color and poor people, and climate change acts as a double jeopardy because it physically affects these areas um, where um, these people live. Um, these areas get hit worse, and then on top of that, such as many island nations and equatorial regions, and then on top of that, these people are less equipped to deal with the climate disaster because of the institutionalized um, and ingrained racism in our society. Yeah. Um. So this must be like the first thing we considered when dealing with the climate crisis, and this is the first thing that the uh, federal Green New Deal and our Green New Deal wants to address, as to um, to recognize that this racism um, is present. 
So Northampton is also is known to be a progressive advocate for the climate. For instance, with the input from various members of the community, the city already is developing a climate, climate resiliency plan. In 2008, the Sustainable Northampton Plan was adopted with its guiding principle being to significantly improve energy efficiency in the city um, and city buildings and programs, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and encourage the conservation and use of alternative and renewable energy sources throughout the community. So um, you all and all of our elected officials in Northampton have been leaders on the climate change as well and have committed to 100% renewable energy by 2050. But we know that that actually is too late for us because it's um it's time for us as a as a country as a glo as a global community and here in Northampton to really um, tell the truth about the climate emergency and we need drastic climate action now because it's the only thing that will save us um, <laughs> I mean because adopting and adopting a green new deal for our city will would be a great next step um, for a history of progressive climate policy um, many cities have already passed a Green New Deal, such as Boston, Seattle, New York City, Los Angeles, Portland, Washington, D.C., and many other smaller cities. Um, and, if, um, and considering our wonderful track record here in Northampton, it would be, um, it would be great if we could join these cities. Um, and we want a Green New Deal passed in Northampton, not only so that it sparks more action, um, like actual policy beside, beyond just being a resolution, um, not only so that it sparks more of those actual policies, but also because when more and more municipalities across the state and the country have Green New Deals, it will increase um, state and federal pressure for passing a Green New Deal. Um, yeah, so the Green New Deal, we're trying to pass tonight, it, again, it's only a resolution, but it will spark for our municipality action, also spark state level and federal level action, hopefully, as more and more towns come together to support this legislature. Um, the, new, the Green New Deal can lead to real change in Northampton, like solar panels, things we're already seeing happening a lot, so we're kind of ahead of the game here. Solar panels, uh, wind power, planting wetlands, carbon neutral buildings, gray water systems, planting trees, the Shade Tree Committee, for instance, um, uh, public transportation, like the PVTA and funding for that, the bike share program, bike lanes, more compost, and electric char uh, charging stations, just to name a few things that could be accomplished should we pass a resolution here. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so in conclusion, uh, we just want to thank all of you for all of the tremendous work that you've already done on behalf of um, the climate crisis, and um, just we want to encourage you to vote to pass this resolution for the Green New Deal, because ultimately the climate crisis, this isn't just about saving the trees or animals or the planet. This is really about saving ourselves, humanity. Um, it poses the biggest challenge that humanity has ever faced. And um, <coughs> this is about our survival. We act now or swim later. Yeah, <laughs> so as Greta Thunberg once said, that our house is on fire. But um, in Northampton, we can do um, our part and put it, put it out. So yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, both of you. Um, Tim and Wallace is next. Hello, I'm Tim and Wallace. I live in Northampton. I grew up here and I've been gone for 45 years. I just had my Northampton High School reunion uh, this weekend and I'm very excited and proud to be back in Northampton where it's taking a leadership position on so many of these important issues like the climate and like the nuclear weapons issue. So I'm here to really just um, support the home rule petition that uh, the mayor is putting forward as part of the uh, the uh, effort that Northampton has taken, again, a lead in uh, aligning with the nuclear ban treaty that was adopted by 122 countries and showing that we can take steps in our own town and in our own state to make a difference on these issues. And we're, we've got legislation in the State House. We've got other cities around. Uh, East Hampton is working on a similar process and we've passed town meeting resolutions near nearby towns. And so we're, we're just very um, encouraged and uh, thankful for you for, for taking these steps. Thanks. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Next up, Marty Nathan. Hi, I'm Marty Nathan, 24 Massasoit Street. And first thing I want to do is to thank Willa and Serafina for coming tonight and for pushing the Green New Deal. And I know 
I, I feel confident that you will do what is right and pass that resolution. Um, we are at an existential crisis and you have been leading us all for a long time. Um, I also, I'm here to thank you for being willing to take up the resolution to commemorate the Greensboro Massacre. Um, I lost my, hus my first husband, Mike, Nathan, um, 40 years ago, November 3rd, 1979. Um, he was murdered by Ku Klux Klansmen and American Nazis in front of TV cameras in broad daylight in Greensboro, North Carolina. He was a pediatrician, the father of a six-month-old, and um, an activist all of his life for justice and, and against racism. He was killed with four other people, including Jackie Balance, who we'll talk about, and her friend Jim Waller, who was also a pediatrician, who was working to organize unions in Greensboro. It is so critical that we recognize the history of Greensboro because what happened there, we demonstrated in a federal court that there was deep, deep involvement by officialdom in the racism and violence of the Ku Klux Klan that led to the murders of five people and the wounding of 10 others. And today we are faced again with white supremacists. I, I, I don't, haven't used that word in a long time. Um, who are being condoned, encouraged, and protected, and not investigated by officialdom. There is so much that we have to learn from the Greensboro Massacre that is, it is up to all of us, no matter our race or ethnicity, to fight against racism, to fight against repression, and to hang in together as communities to resist the kind of violence that we saw in El Paso and in uh, Ohio and Dayton and also saw 40 years ago in Greensboro. I thank you so much personally for your taking this up. I, it's been an amazing thing for me to have my community, my adopted community, say to me that this is important to you. Um, and I hope that you use this as a, a vehicle to better understand what is going on today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Elliot Fratkin. <clears throat> Good evening, Councilman, Councilwomen, the Mayor. Um, I'm Elliot Fratkin. I live at 24 Massasoit Street. Marty and I moved up here in 1995. Um, we've been together since 1985 when she and um, her survivors won a civil a judgment against the city of Greensboro. It's the first time the city of Greensboro and the police or any police were found liable for the actions of the Ku Klux Klan who they had worked with uh, to let this murders happen in, in broad daylight. Um, when we were living in North Carolina, um, the survivors of this massacre were so demonized and ostracized in that community, with the exception of, of black churches who came to our support. Um, so when we ended up here in Northampton, when I got a job at Smith College, and I felt like I died and, and went to heaven, as, as did Marty. <laughs> this is one of the most supportive communities we've ever lived in. Um, Marty could slip easily from directing the Greensboro Justice Fund to developing with Archie Markham the Markham Nathan Foundation and continuing to practice medicine in Springfield. Um, we are honored and delighted at the possibility of this resolution being accepted by the city of, of Northampton. I very much encourage you to pass it. And this history is not ancient, as Marty said. Um, it's, it's on the rise again. And everything we can do to point out to people Marty's experiences and others like her, and the continuing, as she said, you know, white nationalism and the oppression of, 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 of people is just not right, and it's not who we are in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elliot. <laughs> Susan Lance. Hi, 
Uh, hi, I'm Susan Lance. I live at 74 Lyman Road. I want to just take one minute to acknowledge that many of you, several of you are not, you're in your final year of service to the city on this council. And I want to thank all of you, even those of you who are continuing for your really tried and true commitment to our city. It takes a huge amount of effort and time and intelligence and thoughtfulness and preparedness. And I just want you to know it, although you don't ever hear it enough, it does not go unnoticed and it is gratefully appreciated. Um, so tonight, <laughs> I'm here to ask you to support the mayor's uh, request to uh, issue a legislative statement to the state to allow the city of Northampton to disqualify any company that bids on a contract in Northampton that has anything to do with the design, the manufacturing, or the, um, something else, thank you, sale of <laughs> nuclear weapons or any component thereof to be disqualified from that bidding practice. This is totally in line with your support that you have done in the past and what the mayor has um, proceeded to do in aligning our city with the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. I congratulate you, our city. I'm proud to be here. We are the first city in the Commonwealth to come this far in aligning ourselves with this treaty, and I hope it's just the beginning of others to follow suit. Um, keep it going, let's do it, we can do it, and with the defunctioning of nuclear weapons, we could afford to support the Green New Deal. Totally, completely, and wholly, if we took the millions of dollars that just goes into the maintenance of those weapons of mass destruction and we put it to life sustaining options, it would be great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jackie Balance. <coughs> Jackie Balance, 35 Warner Street in Florence. I am um, blown away by these acts that I have to follow here. I'd like to echo Marty Nathan in thanking Willa and Serafina for their resolution to support the Green New Deal. The Arctic tundra's on fire, the earth is wearing a crown of fire. It's the least we can do. We'll support the Green New Deal. Um, Way back in the 1960s, I was friends with Dr. Jim Waller, and at that time, he was a very, very passionate supporter of the Civil Rights Movement and the Anti-Vietnam War Movement. He never stopped being passionate about his politics, and his murder touched me and everyone who knew him and loved him. And who would have thunk 50, 40, 50 years later, in the city of Northampton, some of his friends would find each other, and people from Greensboro would choose Northampton as a place to hold the commemoration of the 1979 massacre. It's so timely, it's as timely as climate change, the issue of white supremacy. It's been in the headlines a lot lately, I don't need to tell you. And the city of Northampton has always been in the vanguard, as everyone has been saying, of all the issues that matter. Uh, so I would be very pleased if my city council would support the Green New Deal and the commemora commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the Greensboro Massacre and Susan, Susan Lance makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> the, a anything we can do to get rid of nukes and free up that cash for the Green New Deal is Makes a, it's just Yankee common sense. Thank you. You're a wonderful city council. I agree with <laughs> so that was everybody who had signed up. Would anyone else like to speak? Please. 
<laughs> Hi, I'm Pocky Whelan, and my legal address is still here in Northampton, although I've been down in D.C. for a couple of years. Um, I just want to say, um, oftentimes I, I bore my, my colleagues and friends to death because I say, well, we've done that in Western Mass. We've done that. We have more resolutions that you could pay, wallpaper the room with our resolutions. But I want to just commend you and commend the, the mayor and the people of Northampton and Western Mass who are really the, the leaders, the pioneers in pushing for the kind of world we want to see. And uh, I, I'm working with the, uh, with the disarmament from, uh, di and divestment from the military industrial complex. And the, the home rule petition that is before you today, brought to you by the mayor and the, the good citizens, is something that will be a guiding light for those of us who are working in other areas of divestment. So, um, so thanks to all of you, and I'm so happy to be here tonight with you to, uh, to share in this. And of course, echo the need for the Green New Deal, and yes, let us remember the Greensboro Massacre and commit ourselves ever deeply to never having that happen again. Thanks. Thanks, Pac. <laughs> Who's next? Anyone? Yes, please. I'm Sharon Moulton, 48 Evergreen Road in the part of Northampton that's called Leeds. Um, and I'm here in support of all three things that you've heard about. And I, um, I just want to say a little bit more about the Green New Deal and what in the cl um, climate crisis that we're in. And one is this says it, this resolution is about doing something on the national level, and I haven't read the bottom line about when you pass it, to whom you're going to send it, but I'm going to ask you to please, as somebody who, since she retired from teaching, has worked with Climate Action Now, in the legislative arena in Massachusetts, and for three straight sessions we failed, not only we haven't passed anything that's been a bold um, step to curb climate disaster, things have gotten out of committee and gotten a vote. So it, 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 it's embarrassing. And so I recommend that when this is passed that it be sent with a letter from you to leaders at the state level that things need to be done in 2019. Now, even July of 2020 is bad. We, it, it should have been done before, it needs to be done now. And the uh, other thing is that I got a chance to he hear Bill McKibben in person um, at the League of Women Voters Convention, and he talked about after the last student um, climate strike that Greta Thun Thunberg called him and said, you know, it's really clear that we, the youth can't do this together, that we all have to stand up together. So I'm asking people to go home and put on their calendars September 20th. Um, it's a, gonna be a student-led, but worldwide climate strike. And um, we're um, involved with people that are planning exactly what that's gonna mean, so you need, it's not totally planned yet, but plan yourself to do something. And the ask, of the day is for bold legislative action. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Who's next? Anyone? No? Okay. One more. Oh, there's one more? <laughs> Jim, do you see something I don't see? I thought I saw a hand. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One more try. Any, would anyone else care to speak to us this evening? No? Okay. If that's <coughs> the case, then we are going to – thank you very much for your comments, and we will convene our meeting. So, Laura, when you're ready, a roll call, please. Here. Present. Here. 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 Okay. 
Okay. Um, are there any updates? Many committee chairs? No? Moving on, then how about any one minute announcements from councilors? Oh, Councilor LaBarge. Thank you, Councilor. Um, I just want to thank the North Dayton Rotary. I want to thank her a bit. And all our volunteers and the Rotary from East Stampton. Um, we did 500 backpacks this morning for the students here in our community. And I'm talking about we had an assembly line that was unbelievable and all kinds of papers and pens and everything. And it was an honor to be involved in that. Thank you for that work. Anybody else with any announcements? Nope. Okay, so uh, Mr. Mayor, any communications? No? So moving on, we're gonna start with our resolutions. <clears throat> the first resolution we have is R19122. It's uh, upon the recommendation of Councillor William H. Dwight, Councillor Dennis P. Bidwell, and Mayor David J. Narkowitz. Um, Councillor Dwight isn't here. Councillor Bidwell, would you like the honors of reading it or would you rather I read it? Your, pl uh, your pleasure. By all means, go right ahead. Um, let me see, let me get the official version in front of me as I'm reading it. Uh, it's titled, A Resolution Declaring October 6, 2019, a day to commemorate the 1979 Greensboro Massacre and to reflect on white supremacy. <clears throat> Whereas 2019 marks the 40th anniversary of the Greensboro, North Carolina Massacre, where five demonstrators, while preparing for an anti-Ku Klux Klan rally, were shot and killed by members of the Klan and by American Nazis, leaving 10 other demonstrators wounded. And whereas white supremacists are still active in America, spreading hate and murdering people in the streets, churches, synagogues, and other gathering places in our communities. And whereas the events in Greensboro 40 years ago and the events of El Paso two weeks ago remind us of the necessity to challenge white supremacy in all of its forms, whereas survivors of the Greensboro massacre will be commemorating the massacre on October 6, 2019 in Northampton with programs honoring their loved ones and friends lost in 1979, remembering other victims of white supremacy, reflecting on the lessons learned from the massacre, and examining how this history informs the struggle against white supremacy today. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Northampton, Massachusetts designates Sunday, October 6, 2019 a day of commemoration of the 1979 Greensboro Massacre and encourages the residents of Northampton to gather that day in remembrance of the historical victims of hate crimes and in rededication to the ongoing struggle against white supremacy and all forms of bigotry. Thank you for reading that. Um, it, is there a motion for this resolution? Make a motion. Second. Motion's been made by Councilor LeBard and seconded by Councilor <coughs> Nash. Um, discussion on the resolution. I will go back to one of the co-sponsors if you'd like to. I will say just, just a word, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm glad Marty Nathan is still here for this. <laughs> um, when, when I heard about the El Paso shooting, and shortly followed by the, the Dayton tragedy, <clears throat> I found myself pondering how we might respond as a city council to this intersection of white supremacy and lax gun laws, all of it aided and abetted by uh, the highest uh, elected official in our country. And I hadn't really settled on, on anything in particular. I was still mulling when I got an email from Marty Nathan <coughs> proposing this day of commemoration and reminding me that it was 40 years since the Greensboro massacre, something I knew about in a general way, but it was very interesting and sobering for me to be reacquainted with the specifics. And so that really crystallized it, that, that this uh, resolution in commemoration of those lost and in remembrance of the lessons of the Greensboro Massacre of 40 years ago and making the direct line connection to the white supremacy uh, intersecting with gun violence in our country now, uh, aided and abetted, as I said, by elected officials of this country, including our president, 
made it really clear to me in a, in a direct and personal way with the, with the linkage to uh, Marty Nathan's experience in Greensboro and Jackie Balance's experience that right here in Northampton we had this very poignant direct relationship to tragedies of 40 years ago that are strikingly similar to tragedies of today. So it was uh, based on all that that I've been very pleased to work with Marty and with Jackie and Councillor Dwight and the mayor who was also uh, recommending this to, uh, to bring this resolution forward. I would recommend that the council join me in voting for it and also that we um, participate in the events of October 6th and at an appropriate time I might ask Marty Nathan if she would share with us a little bit more if, if, if there is more information to be shared about what's in the works for October 6th. But for now I, I will just uh, recommend to my colleagues uh, uh, yes votes on this resolution. Uh, Mayor Narkowitz, is there anything you want to add as one of the sponsors? Councilor Labarge. Um, I kept reading over and over this resolution. And this is what I feel about it. Um, I feel that the escalation of racialized from the President of the United States has evoked response from all sides of the political spectrum. As Americans, we have had such moments before, and as people, we have acted. Events of last week and the week before, it just doesn't stop. Calls to mind a similarly dark period in our history. It just bothers me of what's happening here. When does the silence become complicity? What will it take for us all to say with one voice that we have had enough? The question is less about the president's sense of decency, but of ours. We must stand against the bigotry, the hatred, and the intolerance, and that is hurled at us all especially when it comes from the highest offices, which exactly Councilor Bidwell had just spoke about, of this nation. We must say this will not be tolerated. Enough is enough. I am supporting this 100%. I have talked to many residents already of attending this on October 6th, and I am hoping that they do do this. Thank you, Councilor Large. <laughs> Councilors, anybody else? Comments? Councilor Klein. Um, thank you to the <coughs> sponsors. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilor Bidwell, especially, I think, for making that connection between 1979 and now and the kinds of things that are going on. Um, and I just want to say to Marty and Jackie, um, I'm really sorry for your loss and the, certainly the circumstances around that loss. Um, and I just want to say something really brief, which is that these situations that um, are really hallmarks of uh, really deep systems of racism in our country, in our communities, um, of people being killed uh, by Ku Klux Klan members, um, police in collusion with Ku Klux Klan, um, white supremacist youth who are shooting up churches and other places, venues, killing people. Um, these are these kind of um, important hallmarks that we need to note and respond to, but we need to make sure that we're contextualizing it within the, the um, the systemic racism that exists in this country and that is very much um, carried out and perpetrated by all of us, whether we mean to or not, by the systems that we have in place um, to manage our communities. Um, and and we, just, we need to be more than just kind of responding to these particular uh, kinds of events. We need to be thinking every single day, you know, how we, and especially those of us who are white in this 
room, which is most of us, um, what role we can play in addressing the racism that really undergirds um, our society and that, that um, you know, spawn these particular kinds of events as well. Um, from things like um, housing, the poverty of people of color uh, being at rates quite disproportionate to their presence in the United States, the um, over-incarceration of people of color in this country. I mean, there's so many things that we could talk about here, but I, I don't want us to lose sight of all of those um, as they're embedded in the, the kind of bigger racist picture of racism in this country that, um, that really does uh, gave birth to the 1979 Greensboro massacre and um, the massacres that we're seeing all the time. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Counselors, anybody else like to comment? I'll just also uh, extend my thanks to the to the sponsors for giving us this opportunity to um, to reflect and commemorate this event and um, and to connect it to where we are at this moment and see those echoes and patterns as they've reemerged um, in, in horrifying ways. Um, and thank you to to Marty and Elliot and Jackie and um, we're we're incredibly grateful that you've made Northampton your home and we're unbelievably all the better for it so thank you um if there are no further comments sh yes Councilor i just wanted it to be appropriate to ask for some information if you have anything to share about plans that are shaping up for october 6th yes if you would permit that marty could you just come to the podium so we could hear that way we can capture it on there for anyone who's listening so we're recognizing dr nathan who's going to come in on sunday october 6th there will be, we will be bringing up two wonderful mm -hmm. old friends. They are not old, they've just been our friends for a long time. Um, Nelson and Joyce Johnson, who, who formed and lead the beloved Community Center in Greensboro, who themselves were uh, survivors of the ma massacre. Um, and they will be coming up to talk to us at Edwards Church from two to four in the afternoon and being addressed by questions from local organizers and activists, and we hope that the Sunrise Movement will join us um, about the question, uh, addressing questions of how does one organize for justice, peace, and a sustainable world when one is faced by rising white supremacy and violence. Um, because this is a community question and we want to have a community dialogue about it. It's a worldwide question, but I think that, that we get down here in Northampton pretty well to try to answer those things and support the people who are doing the work. So please, 2 to 4 p.m. Sunday, October 6th. There will be a fundraiser the next night, but I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> um, but, and we would really love it if you could come and, and give us your <coughs> blessing and participate in the dialogue, okay? Thank you. Okay, so um, let's have a roll call for this important resolution. Councilor Goodwell. Yes. Councilor Cohen. Yes. Councilor Navarro. Yes. 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 And me. Yes. <laughs> okay. That passes first reading. Okay, moving to our second resolution. <clears throat> it's 19.123, a resolution calling for the federal government to pass a Green New Deal. Um, Councillor Klein, I will give you the same offer if you would like to read this resolution you worked so hard on. I am more than happy to have you read it if you would like to. <coughs> okay. Um, upon the recommendation of Councillor Elisa F. Klein and Councillor William H. Dwight, R19.123, a resolution calling for the federal government to pass a Green New Deal, whereas the Northampton City Council is interested in ensuring that the children, grandchildren, and all subsequent generations of children to come in our community are protected from the risks posed by global climate emergency. And whereas, Northampton has long been a leader in climate action, to wit, 
in its January 18th, 2018, quote, resolution in support of 100% renewable energy, end quote, the Northampton City Council stated its support for, quote, rapid attainment of a goal of 100% clean renewable energy for the state of Massachusetts and the city of Northampton, end quote. In its April 20th, 2017 resolution calling on the Massachusetts legislature to establish carbon tradition pricing to curb climate change. The Northampton City Council called for the Massachusetts State Legislature to pass legislation imposing a fee on the carbon dioxide that is emitted in the use of fossil fuels. Mayor David J. Narkowitz publicly stated support for the climate change mitigation goals enshrined in the Paris Agreement, pledged that the city will become, quote, net zero by the end of 2050 and join the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy in its shared vision for unified action to combat climate change. In, in, in follow-up to its 10-year Sustainable Northampton Plan, Northampton just completed a 10-year Climate Resilience and Regeneration Plan as a roadmap for actualizing the above commitments and carrying out comprehensive steps towards transitioning from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources, increasing energy efficiency and creating systems for the consumption of fewer resources. And <clears throat> whereas an October 2018 United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, report says that we have only until 2030 to limit devastating global warming and avoid a climate change catastrophe. And whereas the October 2018 IPCC report also makes clear that every bit of warming matters. So every fraction of a degree less of warming will save lives and pay dividends across the world's economies. And whereas the world is already experiencing serious, costly, and increasing impacts from climate change, including but not limited to intense storms, unprecedented flooding, persistent wildfires, longer and hotter heat waves, worsening flood and drought cycles, growing invasive species and, and insect problems, accelerated species extinction rates, rising sea levels, decreased air quality that leads to health problems, and a dramatic increase in refugees from climate impacted lands. And whereas an inadequate response to climate change will increase not only the above environmental harms, but will also result in economic catastrophes that threaten human life, the health of communities, and critical infrastructure. And whereas the most negative impacts of climate change are generally falling on frontline communities such as low-income people, immigrants, and people of color. These communities bear a disproportionate burden of climate change, yet have contributed to climate change the least and have the fewest resources to manage its negative impacts. For decades, frontline communities have been the first to be harmed by pollution and the last to be rebuilt after climate disasters strike. Yet all communities in Northampton and throughout the United States have the right to clean air and water, protection from disasters, and access to healthy food, no matter their income level, the color of their skin, or where they were born. And whereas, doing what is now necessary to adequately address the climate crisis requires a national mobilization of a scope and scale that is a historic opportunity to address inequities caused and exacerbated by the fossil fuel economy, as well as providing unprecedented levels of prosperity <coughs> and economic security for all people in the United States. And whereas on February 7, 2019, U.S. Senator Edward Markey and U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez released <coughs> excuse me, a resolution recognizing the duty of the federal government to create a Green New Deal. And whereas the federal Green New Deal legislation would create a detailed mobilization plan to within a decade achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions through a fair and just transition for all communities and workers, create millions of good high wage jobs and ensure prosperity and economic security for all people of the United States, invest in the infrastructure and, in, and industry of the United States to sustainably meet the challenges of the 21st century, secure for all people of the United States for generations to come, clean air and water, climate and community resiliency, healthy food, access to nature and a sustainable environment and promote justice and equity by stopping current, preventing future and repairing historic oppression of indigenous communities, communities of color, migrant communities, deindustrialized communities, depopulated rural communities, the poor, low income workers, women, the elderly, the unhoused, people with disabilities and youth. And whereas to achieve these goals, the Green New Deal legislation calls for a 10 year national mobilization effort, which would include building resilience against climate change related disasters, <clears throat> providing funding for community based solutions to climate change, overhauling transportation systems to remove pollution and greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector as much as is technologically feasible, repairing and upgrading infrastructure, expanding the use of clean, renewable and zero emission sources of power with the goal of zeroing out fossil fuel sources, creating energy efficient distributed and quote smart power grids, 
cleaning up existing hazardous waste and abandoned sites, identifying other pollution sources and creating solutions to remove them, maximizing water and energy efficiency in new buildings and by retrofitting existing buildings, removing greenhouse gases and restoring natural ecosystems through proven low-tech solutions that increase soil carbon storage such as land preservation and reforestation, removing pollution and greenhouse gas emissions from industry as much as is, as is technologically feasible, restoring and protecting fragile ecosystems by enhancing biodiversity, and whereas local governments call for the federal government to pass a Green New Deal, Local governments calling for a federal government to pass a Green New Deal will demonstrate widespread popular support for necessary and just climate action. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Northampton hereby calls on the U.S. Senate and House to, as soon as possible, pass a Green New Deal based on the resolution released by Senator Markey and Representative Ocasio-Cortez. <coughs> be it further resolved the administration, that the administrative assistant to the City Council she ca shall cause a copy of this resolution to be sent to U.S. Senator Edward J. Markey, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren, U.S. Representative James P. McGovern, and U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, and then there's a note at the end that says, this resolution was developed through the initiative of Northampton residents Serafina Foreman, Willis Sippel, and Jordan Windsor, and the co-coordinators of, Sun co of Sunrise Northampton, an organization of young people uniting to end climate crisis. Sunrise Northampton is affiliated with the National Sunrise Movement. Move to approve. Second. It's been, the motion has been made and seconded. So, <coughs> discussion while I drink some water. <coughs> Thank you very much for reading that. I My voice just can't <laughs> do it, so I really appreciate it. It's, it's a long one. Um, before I kind of make some comments, general comments, I just want to reintroduce um, two of the people. I don't think Jordy's here, or is he? Oh, yes, hi. So. Um, the three people who really made this possible, who came to me and Bill Dwight, um, my co-sponsor on this, um, Serafina Foreman, Willis Sippel, and Jordan Windsor, um, this wouldn't exist without their initiative, and it was an incredible pleasure to work with them, um, just to see the incredible dedication and just the incredible intelligence and wisdom and thinking behind uh, the wording of this and you know I I worked on the wording with them and I would send edits to them and I would get back these very detailed um, explanations of why the particular words were chosen and it made so much everything that they said made so much sense there's just so much deep thinking that young people in our community are doing and the initiative that they're taking is what is gonna save this planet. And I'm just very honored to have worked with them and um, I think we're really lucky in Northampton to have amazing people like these three folks who brought this forward. Um, I also, if anybody has questions because this is so complex, we can recognize the three of them because they really are the primary authors of this document. So just to say that before I uh, make a few comments. Um, so the thing that I've been thinking about, I know that the Green New, De Green New Deal can be somewhat controversial for people. And um, I, I, for me, whether you feel like it's the correct policy or it isn't, if it's not, you know, it doesn't seem to you the right approach to the global climate, climate crisis that we're facing, um, I don't even know if that should matter tonight when you think about voting on this resolution because what you can't deny is that this initiative was taken by young people in our community that the crafting of this resolution is an impressive and really phenomenal action um, that we should support wholeheartedly i again just you know working with these guys and their thinking we it just behooves us, I think, to um, step forward and support their vision for the future. I think it's safe to say that the vast preponderance of the counselors here um, are over 55 years old, with one or two of us maybe pushing 40 or 50. Um, so most of us only have another 10 or 20 or 30 years to live, if we're lucky. Um, so, I, <laughs> sorry, hope I didn't offend anyone here. <laughs> so I, all right, so maybe another 40 years. Um, so, 
you know, we have to look at what this legacy is that we're leaving, as the resolution says, to our children, our grandchildren, all of the subsequent generations of children who are going to be born in Northampton and here on this planet to take it more globally. Um, we're leaving them a planet Earth that is literally burning and a planet Earth that is experiencing devastating climate-driven disasters. And the science around this is absolutely incontrovertible. Um, and these people who are one or two generations younger than those of us here on the council, they're saying to us, we need to aggressively address this climate emergency so we can actually live and thrive and not be threatened by climate change and climate precipitated disasters. Um, so we're not threatened by a slow roasting demise. I, and I think we have to hear that from the young people in our communities. It's our obligation as the people responsible for bequeathing to them this mess to support their vision and their call to action. We need to listen to and respond to their demand for a livable future. Uh, the 14-page New Green Deal resolution um, at the federal level calls for a new national social, industrial, and economic mobilization on a scale that has not been seen since World War II and the New Green Deal era. That's language from the, the, the resolution itself. Um, it aims to reduce carbon emissions in the U.S. to net zero within one decade. Um, this is very much in keeping with the resolution that this body that we passed here um, that called for a rapid attainment of a goal of 100% clean renewable energy for Massachusetts and the city of Northampton. And the Green New Deal's goal is a bit more ambitious, ambitious than our mayor's call for 100% um, renewables by 2050, but it's certainly in keeping with the knowledge that we need to reserve our, um, reverse our current path and eliminate our carbon footprint. And again, most important, it's what our city's youth are demanding. They know that it's what they need to actually live on uh, on this planet. The Green New Deal represents, at the very least, a path forward, and it articulates a vision and the beginning of a plan. It's our absolute obligation, in my opinion, to heed the clarion call of our youth and to support them. Um, I would be very pleased to have you make this statement of support and solidarity with our city's youth by voting yes unanimously tonight on the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Other counselors, comments? No? Councilor Labarge. Yes. Um, I wanted to thank the three people that came forth. Um, I think Alyssa, Councillor Klein, you did an excellent job um, bringing forth exactly <laughs> the importance of our young ones here in our community who are working tirelessly of having resolutions coming forth that we know we have a serious problem with climate change. I'm going to support this 100%. Well, then I, I'll just take, oh, sorry. I'll just make a really yeah. quick note. I, I failed to mention that uh, Councillor Dwight clearly couldn't be here, um, but he really was the council driver behind this, and I'm, I'm sorry that he's not here, but I wanted to thank him for um, bringing me into this and allowing me to work with the folks who brought it forward to us. Thank you for that. Um, if there's no other comments, I'll just also echo that, you know, this is truly masterfully and beautifully done. Um, I mean, it's really a remarkable resolution. It was an absolute honor to be able to <laughs> read it, so thank you. Um, <laughs> as long as it is, <laughs> it was an honor to read it. Um, and as always, I'm just awed by the young people of Northampton. I just, um, and their leadership. I mean, they are, they truly are leading us in every possible way. And so um, thank you for all that you do and for keeping us moving forward. And um, some days you are really the only thing that can open this world. No pressure. Um, thank, you. thank you for that. You are all really remarkable, and thank, thank goodness for you. So thank you for this resolution. Any other discussion? No? Then let's also have a roll call on this very important piece of work. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Yes. Yes. That also passes in first reading unanimously.
Thank you, everybody. the September 17th, 2019 preliminary municipal election. Um, I will read it and then we'll have a motion on it. So uh, this is upon the recommendation of our city clerk, Pamela L. Powers, 19.120, um, warrant for September 17th, 2019 preliminary municipal election in accordance with the provisions of the law. Notice is hereby given that a meeting of the inhabitants of Ward 7 in the city of Northampton qualified to vote will be held on Tuesday, September 17th, 2019 in the polling places designated for the purpose by the city council as follows. <coughs> Ward 7, Precinct A, which is in John F. Kennedy Middle School's community room, and Ward 7, Precinct B, uh, th that polling location is in Leeds School gymna Gymnasium on the lower level. The polls will be opened at 7 o'clock in the forenoon and closed at 8 o'clock in the evening on the said day. And all such voters will, in the precincts in which they are individually entitled to vote between said hours, given their votes for the nomination of councillor from Ward 7. Move to approve. Second. It's been made and seconded. Um, any discussion on this warrant? Oh, yes. I know this is unusual, but I just want to say, like, woohoo, we are actually having a preliminary in Ward 7. I'm really excited about the um, civic engagement of Ward 7, that uh, it's just exciting. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. And <laughs> indeed, you're right. Um, any other comments on the warrant for this show? Um, and I'll note that. Uh, there's been a request for two readings on this so it can be posted in a timely manner to make sure we have this election happen. So um, uh, let's do a roll call on the warrant. Councillor Klein. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, did someone move it already? Didn't we yes. did, you moved it, yes? I did. Yes. Councillor yes. Labar, please. Um, Councillor Labar. Yes. Uh, Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Suspend yes. Rules. Yes. And uh, motion to suspend rules. Is there a second? second? It's been made and seconded. Any discussion on suspension of rules? No. Um, is there a motion for a second reading? Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Made and seconded. Just a vote. Just a voice oh, vote. Sorry. Yeah. Voice vote only. <coughs> okay. Uh, made and seconded. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Any objections? Motions? No. Um, now, move second, second reading. Thank you. <laughs> Seconded. Second. Um, shall we do a roll call again? Yes. Since we did it the first time. Okay, roll call, please. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Sharon. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Kleiman. Yes. Yes. That passes in two readings, and we will have a preliminary <coughs> election uh, in Ward 7. So next, um, we are going to recess for the Committee on City Services. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, Laura, would you please call the roll of City Services? Present. 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 Here. Here. Okay, and <coughs> just to let folks know, the reason we are having this recess in the regularly scheduled council meeting is because of the summer schedule and our when we when these items were referred um, we wanted to stay within the 45 days um, window where we need to report <coughs> back to our council so um, I'll ask if there isn't any specific public comment related to the items on the city services agenda and if there is seeing none I'll ask if there's a motion to approve the minutes of July 1st. Motion and seconded. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, no additions, corrections, otherwise. That motion carries. And then we really have a brief meeting of four appointments um, that were referred to us on July 11th. Um, the first is for an, a reappointment to the Board of Assessors of Margot E. Welsh of 349 Coles Meadow Road, Northampton, for a term July 19th through uh, June, uh, 20, July 2019 through June 2022. And I did um, correspond with uh, Attorney Welch 
uh, after my review of her application, mostly to um, express my gratitude for her willingness to continue on on the Board of Assessors uh, based on the um, her experience, uh, she's currently serving as an assessor on the board and would like to continue serving on the board, is a lawyer with real, real estate experience and understands many of the issues and the constituencies involved, uh, can hopefully bring valuable knowledge and a helpful voice to the board work issues and discussions. Attorney Welch has also, also served the city on the Council on Aging. So um, I did let her know that I would be asking colleagues for a motion to uh, send her name forward with a positive recommendation um, that she didn't need to attend. And I didn't hear back, but it is summer schedules. I just wanted to know if there was anything else she'd like to share. But as I said, my review um, uh, would be to call for a um, positive recommendation. So I'll ask if someone would offer that motion. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded to send the name of Margot E. Welsh with a positive recommendation for reappointment to the Board of Assessors to the full City Council for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any <coughs> opposition, abstentions? No, thank you. That carries. And the next appointment on our list, I think, was uh, for the Committee on Disabilities. So yes. I'll defer to Council of the Bart. Yes. Um, I talked with um, Michael Morton. And we had a monthly talk. Michael, I'm pretty sure, was on, at that point, the Disability Commission way back in 1999. And he was on it for several years. And then when I came on, Michael was there maybe like about four years later. And then he had to go ahead and make a decision of something that was very important in his family. So Michael now wants to come back to the um, Disability Commission, and I highly recommend Michael. Um, I've worked with him, and he understands many of the issues on the Disability Commission, and I also feel that he can bring back some valuable knowledge and is very helpful in his voice to the Commission and helpful with many discussions that we make. So I am um, making a positive recommendation to full city council for the <coughs> appointment of Michael Morton on the Disability Commission. Okay, moved and seconded to send Michael Morton with a positive recommendation to full city council. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstentions, and that carries <coughs> as well. Thank you. And the council did well. So the next okay. item, please, <coughs> was appointment to the Human Rights Commission. Uh, yes, this would be a reappointment of Davina Miller for the term July 2019 to June 2022. I spoke with uh, Ms. Miller earlier this week, and as many of you know, she was a, I believe, six-term veteran of the school committee. She served for 12 years has been on the Human Rights Commission for, for three years, and she's found it to be a <coughs> quite wonderful experience. She feels, needless to say, it's quite true from everything we've heard tonight and elsewhere that this is a very important time uh, for the life of the community and the city and the country to be taking up uh, the issues that come before the Human Rights Commission. So she looks forward to continuing that. Uh, she's particularly eager to expand the listening sessions, the listening circles that the Human Rights Commission has been holding around the city and hopes that uh, those would yield some specific recommendations in the, in the year ahead. So I would uh, recommend that we forward a positive recommendation for Davina Miller for Human Rights Commission reappointment. Okay, moved and seconded uh, to send the name Davina Miller with a positive recommendation all those in favor? Aye. 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 Abstentions? Uh, opposition? No. That carries as well. And finally, for the Board of Registrars. Yes, I spoke with uh, Mr. Joseph Tarantino. Um, uh, Mr. Tarantino is uh, applying for the Board of Registrars, and um, <coughs> that um, uh, he is a graduate of George Washington Law, graduated in 1993 
uh, um, and a member of the D.C. Bar. Uh, he, lead, he lived uh, down in, he's originally from Northampton, but moved down to D.C. and lived there for about uh, uh, 10 years, and then uh, returned home about 20 years ago. Um, and he's, he's familiar with administrative law. Um, he had a, he, he's had a career working in finance. Um, he's now involved in uh, different media ventures. Um, he's also working as a cameraman at the Yard Goat, so if you go to a game down in Hartford, um, he's part of the crew there. Um, that I, I, one of the important things uh, about his application is that he is a registered Republican and that, for, uh, that we need to have a balance of the two uh, largest parties uh, in the state uh, to, uh, there's four people and we, uh, it's required that two of them be Republican to go with the two Democrats. Um, I found him to be uh, a very pleasant conversationalist and I would like to move his uh, name forward with a positive recommendation. Second. Moved and seconded Second. to send the name Joseph <coughs> Tarantino to the full council with a positive recommendation. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? None. And that also carries. Okay. Um, let me also conclude this portion by saying how much I really enjoy the opportunity to meet the citizen participants in all of our boards and commissions. It's just amazing the, um, the volunteers we have in the city that really keep it running. I'm always quite impressed. And thanks to the mayor for sending us these uh, names, these nominations. Any new business? Hearing none, is there a final motion? Move we adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, so we are back in the full council and we are up to the consent agenda. Um, I'm gonna read the items on the consent agenda and then after that, uh, after they're read, if there's anything that um, you would like to have removed for a separate vote, just let me know. So uh, first up are the minutes of July 17, uh, July 11th, 2019. Um, then the appointments that just came from city services with positive recommendations. So that's uh, Margo E. Welch for the Board of Assessors um, and Michael C. Morton for the Disability Commission <coughs> and Davina Miller for the Human Rights Commission and Joseph Tarantino for the Board of Registrars. Then uh, we have the following appointments for referral to the City Services Committee. Um, and they are Iman Crowley Edge of 56 Summer Street of Northampton um, for the term July 2019 to June 2022 to the Art Council. This would be a reappointment uh, for the Central Business Architecture Committee, Melissa Fridio, uh, 123 South Street. In, uh, and that term is July 2019 to June 2022, also a reappointment. Also to Central Business Architecture Committee, Bridget <coughs> Goggins of 783 Bridge Road. She is the Association of Realtors member. This would be a reappointment for her for the term uh, July 2019 to June 2022. For the housing partnership, Richard Abuza of 245 Chestnut Street in Florence. Uh, term July 2019 to June 2022, another reappointment. And then to the planning board, Euripides D. Oliveria, uh, 35 <coughs> New South Street. Term July 2019, June 2022, also a reappointment. Um, and that is everything on the consent agenda. If Are there any requests for removals? No, then there is there a motion to? Move to approve. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. There's no discussion. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda? Aye. 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 Any objections? Abstentions? It is approved. Now we are going to recess for the Committee on Finance. Excellent. Uh, Laura, would you call our roll, please? Yes, Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Present. Present. Councilor Schwartz. Still here. Okay. Uh, first item is the minutes of July 11th. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any changes, additions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the next item up is a fourth quarter financial report wrapping up 2019. So Finance Director Susan Wright is here to give us our report. 
so you all should have gotten um, four reports from me, um, revenues for the general fund and the enterprise funds and then expenditures. Um, we're in mid-August, so we're still in the process of closing the books out, so these numbers could shift just a little bit, but not, not anything significant. Um, books will be closed by the end of September, and that's when we um, move the accounting system into the, into the new fiscal year. So in terms of 2019, um, where we ended, um, things ended up pretty much as we predicted. Uh, revenues um, uh, were um, exceeded our estimates, um, primarily because we had the um, revenue from the marijuana excise and from the community, um, the host agreements. In the future, if you remember, you've already voted to establish a stabilization fund for the host community fees. So once free cash is certified this fall, uh, the mayor will come with an order to move what was the community host agreement money into that new stabilization fund. And if you remember, the community, the host community fee money is only going to happen for five years. That's why we don't want to build it into the operating budget because it's not a recurring revenue. Um, the excise, though, for marijuana um, was, uh, n you know, rightfully not budgeted in the FY19 budget because it was a revenue that hadn't occurred yet. Um, but if you remember in the 2020 budget, we have um, fully budgeted a reasonable estimate for that. So, so that is primarily the reason for um, the uh, increase in the revenues over last year. Uh, I will point out, though, that uh, meals tax was up um, quite a bit um, the last two quarters of 2019. Meals tax, meals tax revenue was up 9% in the third quarter and almost 5% in the fourth quarter. So, we, you know, that's a, that's a good indicator um, that things are doing well. Um, so other than that, in revenues, uh, the general fund ended with a good, uh, s m you know, fairly routine surplus. We ended up being 96% expended, so 4%, roughly 2.5 million will get returned, and that will show up in our free cash. Um, primarily, the um, reason for most of the returns was vacancies. Uh, there were vacancies in police and vacancies in DPW. Um, and some vacancies and fire. So those, you know, the departments that had the largest budgets and the most staff, uh, when they have vacancies, it does result in returns and as well as returns in some of the employee benefits because if people aren't here, they're not using the health insurance that, mm -hmm. we've, you know, that we've budgeted for. Um, in terms of the enterprise funds, all four enterprise funds uh, met their um, revenue estimates and slightly exceeded them. Um, uh, sewer enterprise <coughs> revenue came in at 101 percent. Water revenue came right in at 100 percent. Stormwater, um, 106 percent, and solid waste came in at 115 percent. So, all of those, um, any surplus there will flow into what's their free cash, but we call that um, uh, uh, retained earnings. Retained earnings is the word that it is for enterprise fund, not free cash. In terms of their expenditures, again, um, they often have a quite a bit uh, returned um, or carried forward because they have a lot of ongoing capital projects and those capital projects are funded in the enterprise funds. So when you see surpluses or unspent funds there, it's only because it's multi-year projects primarily. So, so all for enterprise funds and the general fund all ended as, as we kind of predicted. They ended pretty much on trend for other years as well. Any other questions? Any? Uh, I want to go back to the general fund revenue and just ask a quick question. Um, it's not a huge amount of money, but we have um, collected 170% of what we had um, planned for um, firearm licenses, and I'm just curious about that if you can, I know this isn't exactly your purview, but can you translate that into how many more um, licenses that was and why? 
I would have to get that from the chief. I don't know which which line is that? Is that on page? It's on page three, and it's uh, the fifth. Oh, firearms licenses. Okay, so normally we budget about three thousand, and they and they brought in five thousand one hundred. So and I are those citizen out. licenses? It's not for the police force, is it? No, it's citizen licenses. So, so I I'm just out. curious because I'm interested in looking at trends, especially in this day and age when we're looking at this proliferation of, you know, guns being used by people. And I'm I'm curious: Are we talking about hunting guns? Are we talking about revolvers? I mean, I just if we could get a little bit of information about that, I'd sure. be Sure, and it may interested. not be actually an increase. We may have budgeted 3,000, but we may have brought in 5,000 <coughs> last year as well. It's such a small line item that, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, you know, if we normally bring in five, I'm gonna budget a little less just because I don't wanna, I, I don't like to overestimate our revenue, so. It is a significant increase over what right. was estimated though. Right, so but I, it may not I, be an increase know. over the prior year, but that I can find that out. Any other questions? Well, hearing none, do we have a motion to accept this report? Make a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank we you, have, Susan. Thank you. We have a, a couple of orders. The first is 19-117. Uh, it's an order to award the contract for the FY 2020 audit to Scanlon Associates. You'll recall we have to take this action before the middle of next month. Um, order that whereas section 7-6 of the Northampton City Charter requires that the City Council annually award a contract for an outside audit of the books and accounts of the city to be conducted by a certified public accountant or by a firm of certified public accountants which has no personal interest uh, direct or indirect in the fiscal affairs of the city or any of its officers. So now therefore it be ordered that the city hereby awards the contract for auditing services for FY 2020 to Scanlon Associates LLC. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second. Um, any discussion on this one? Uh, Councillor Nay. Yeah, um, I just, re you know, remember from year to year we, um, that at some point it's good to switch auditors mm -hmm. and that, um, that I'm, and I remember raising this last year and it was kind of like, well, we, we think another year and I, I'm, I'm wondering. Yeah, I think when, when we talked about this in finance yes, we specifically, did. we determined that like next March, right. we're gonna start the procurement process okay. to, to have everybody in and interview them again. Uh, we did a three year deal with Scanlon. This is the fourth, I think. Yes. The fourth yes. year, we did, we did a three year and then we did this one year extension. Mm -hmm. If I recall, mm -hmm. the recommendation was yeah. five to seven years, maybe? That's what DOR, I think, said was five to seven. So uh, finance determined we'd continue with them for this coming year, and then uh, perhaps if we're going to do procurement, we kind of kind of start in March or April because we have to take the action before September. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So to have, inter to have people in for interviews and, and do the process, we have to start a little earlier than this came up this last time. So mm -hmm. Right. No, I think Scanlon's done a great job. I just... <laughs> it's just protocol. Eventually, you got to find somebody else. So, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, any other questions on this one? Then, all in favor of a positive recommendation, of finance, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the next one is nineteen one one eight. Uh, this is an, an order to authorize the payment of prior year bills. Order that the city council authorizes payment of three prior year, uh, prior fiscal year bills from two thousand nineteen, incurred by central services. Um, Fletcher Drain Service, $145, and two from Connecticut Lighting Centers, one for $2,631 and one for $179. Do so we have a motion in finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. And uh, any questions for Ms. Wright on these? Yes. Susan, on the Connecticut Lighting Centers at $2,631, mm -hmm. I mean, how long does, has that bill been sitting there? and not being paid. I don't understand all this. So um, that particular bill was for lighting that's in the uh, Memorial Hall. Uh, there's new lighting in that hallway right outside of Central Services in the Veterans Office. Um, they uh, incurred this expense in April. In April? Yeah, so okay. uh, I think what happened is the bill probably didn't come in until June and okay. they kind of missed it. You know, this, this often ha happens right when the fiscal year ends, and if they don't get it in by July 15th, then it becomes a prior year bill. 
So all the other ones too are the same problem. Yeah, Richard Green, the bill happened in April, and the other Connecticut lighting one, they actually ordered it on June seventeenth. Okay, fine. So. Thank you. Any other questions for these? Then all in favor of uh, a aye. positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 All right, so next is 19119. This is in order to authorize intermunicipal agreements uh, with Worthington for a part time uh, physical education teacher. Order that. Whereas Mass General Law Section 40 uh, 4A allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units, and whereas Mass General Law Section 40 uh, 4A requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved in a city by the city council and the mayor. And whereas the city of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities, therefore pursuant to Mass General Law 40, Section 4A, the city council authorizes the city of Northampton to enter into an agreement with the town of Worthington to share a part-time physical education teacher to be employed by the city of Northampton and to assess the town of Worthington per the agreement for all Prorated associate costs. Do we have a motion? Have a motion. Second. Second. And uh, the mayor is going to explain. Yeah, this is um, one that uh, the um, uh, Northampton Public Schools is looking uh, for a part part time uh, phys ed teacher for one of our elementary schools. And in conversations with the um, superintendent in Worthington, they are also looking for it. So the idea was to try to combine the position to try to make it more attractive as a shared position. Um, so the, um, the superintendents of the two schools have agreed to do that, but because it involves two schools mm -hmm. together, it requires an intermunicipal agreement. So, um, and uh, this is um, something they're hoping to advertise for September, so, yes. I have a really quick question. Have we done anything like this before with teachers? It's, I mean, it's kind of a geographic distance of, of substance, so I'm kind of curious how this is gonna work. I'd have to think about that. Um, we obviously, um, we work regionally with a lot of shared services through the collaborative uh, for education services. Um, uh, but this is one, it, I, I was, I too found it unique because it's Worthington in the Hill Towns. But um, again, they're looking for a point two PE teacher and we're looking for a point two uh, PE teacher. And mm -hmm. um, the thought was that it would be more attractive to somebody to have a point four position. That it, and so we're gonna give it a try. We don't know if it'll work or not. So it's but literally one day here and one day in one Yeah, day typically, um, and, but that's not unusual for PE teachers. A lot of times in the district, they're moving around from school to schools or they may only spend a day in one elementary school. And um, so uh, both superintendents are, are uh, willing to try because I think they haven't had much success working alone. So we'll see. Um, we obviously provide, you know, veteran services in Worthington and hey. Northampton, so it's not, un we do have some um, shared services with the town of Worthington, so we'll see. I, I didn't, uh, didn't put it on the agenda, but I was going to ask if um, we could get two readings on this, just mm -hmm. because the, I, the goal is to be hired by September 1st, and obviously you won't be meeting again until after September 1st, so. Any other questions for the mayor? All right, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. Aye. Any all right, and the next one are those um, budgetary transfers from the reserve for personnel um, for, for the contracts that we spoke of earlier. And uh, yeah, these are the, uh, these are, um, these are funds that you appropriated as part of the FY20 budget in the salary reserve account. And uh, my order is to request that they now be moved out into uh, the various uh, departments um, and uh, you have a detailed breakdown mm -hmm. of how much coming from the reserve personnel account and right. what. So I'll just read off for the record the amount of where they're, what's going on and they're all coming from uh, the reserve for personnel. So the city council uh, permanent salaries gets $1,506, mayor's office gets $7,619, the auditor gets $5,098, the assessor gets $3,525, the treasurer collector gets $7,772. Human resources gets $4,989. Information technology gets $8,772. City clerk gets $2,433. Planning and sustainability gets $7,391. Central services gets $17,937. The police department gets $263,301. <clears throat> Public Safety, the Communications Center gets $13,645. The 
building inspections gets $9,401. DPW administration gets $4,457. Uh, highway department gets $21,095. Forestry parks and cemeteries gets $16,917. The health department gets $5,457. Senior Services gets $13,717. <coughs> Veterans Office gets $3,563. Parks and Rec gets $6,758. Arts and Culture gets $2,647. Uh, and they all come from Reserve for Personnel. The total transfer is $428,000. Do we have a motion in finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. Any other questions after that for the mayor? Yes, sir. I just had one question. Um, after this four hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars transfer, uh, wh how much remains in that reserve for personnel? That one actually will be um, expended. So um, this is that's the, the that the, is the, the, the full amount. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Yep. So as you mentioned earlier, it was budgeted. Uh, yes, it was. So we kind of had an idea. Yes. So that's what's in it right now. Mm -hmm. okay. We don't anticipate any other uh, collective bargaining related transfers for the rest of the year. Any other questions before we vote on this one? All right, hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 And I know of no other new business, so I'm looking to adjourn. We move to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Associates. Motion has been <coughs> made and seconded to approve it. Um, is there any discussion on further discussion on this? No? Okay. Um, Laura, when you get a moment, roll call, please. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. And Councilor Lavelle? Yes. <coughs> And that, can, uh, Mr. Mayor, that doesn't. That one does not need a second reading, right? No. It's only Scanlon. Scanlon. Yes, two readings on that. that one. Well. So, uh, <laughs> passes in first reading. Moving on to 19.118, in order to authorize payment of prior year bills. Motion approved. Second. Being seconded. <clears throat> Any discussion on this order to pay those prior year bills? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Lamar. Yes. Councilor Lamar. Yes. Suspend the rule. Motion's been made. Second. Since being second to suspend rules. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Um, is move there second reading? Thank second. you. Motion's been made and seconded to move second reading. Any discussion? No. Roll call, please. Councilor Nash. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. 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 Okay, that passes in first and second reading. Um, moving on to 19.119, in order to authorize intermunicipal agreement with Worthington for part time PE teacher. Second. It's been made and seconded. Any discussion? No. Um, roll call, please. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Klein. Aye. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. And Councillor Lavelle. Yes. Suspend the rule. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded to suspend rules. Any discussion on suspending rules? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Objections? Abstentions? Second reading. Second. It's been made and seconded. Move second reading. Any discussion on second reading? No. Um, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Okay. We are up to 19.121 in order for FY 2020 budget transfers. Move approval. Second. second. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Lavar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Bidwell. Yes. 
And am I right that there's a request for a second reading? Yes. Yep. Is there I suspend rules? Motion has been second. made and seconded to suspend rules. Any discussion? All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 No objections? Abstentions? Rules are suspended. To approve and second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for second reading. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. That also passes in second reading, right? Mm -hmm. We just did so many. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 that's that's second reading. Okay. Um, there are no s financial orders on second reading other than the ones we just did two readings for. Um, moving on to orders. We have 19.113, an order authorizing the city of Northampton to disqualify bidders on municipal contracts who participate in the design, manufacture, or maintenance of nuclear weapons. <clears throat> Ordered that the mayor is hereby authorized and requested to petition the general court to the end that the following legislation be adopted precisely as follows. The general court may make clerical or editorial changes of form only to the bill unless the mayor approves amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court. The mayor is hereby authorized to approve amendments which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of this petition. An act relative to disqualification of bidders on city contracts being enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives in the general court assembled as follows. Section 1, notwithstanding the provisions of Chapter 30B of the general laws and any other general or special law to the contrary, the city of Northampton may disqualify from an award of a contract any bidder or vendor who participates in the design, manufacture, manufacture, or maintenance of nuclear weapons. Such disqualification shall apply to any manufacturer or maintenance of such weapons and to any bidder that is a parent or holding entity of a subsidiary company that engages in the, in the design, manufacture, or maintenance of such weapons. Section 2, this act shall take effect upon its passage. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. This was the home rule petition we heard about. That is correct. Um, so uh, some of you may recall from your last meeting that in uh, the end of last year, I issued an executive policy order um, uh, declaring that Northampton would align itself with the um, International Nuclear uh, Ban Treaty. Um, it did mention this idea of, um, uh, of not um, doing business with folks involved in the design, manufacture, or maintenance of nuclear weapons, um, but it had the caveat in the executive order that said to the extent practicable by law, um, because in fact, uh, Chapter 30B, um, which is the procurement law for Massachusetts, wouldn't actually, does not actually allow us to do that um, uh, because we have to accept bids from anyone and that's not a reason for disqualifying someone. Um, and so what this is is a special act that would actually ask the legislature to create that exception for us. Um, and uh, allow us to, to make that distinction. Um, uh, you may have heard at the last meeting, I sent copies of our executive order uh, to all of the, um, all of the identified uh, manufacturers of nuclear weapons in the United States, uh, so they'd at least know. Um, I, I don't suspect they're um, you know, bidding on our paper towel contracts or other contracts that we put out. We don't usually put out a lot of contracts. Um, for obviously for weaponry, but there may be some crossover um, industries. So um, that's what this would do, and the first step is getting the council to approve it, and then we send it off to our legislators so they can file it. Very straightforward. Question. Is it, because this is a, essentially a, a, a home rule petition, is it too early to ask kind of some of the practical questions of how, this, how the city will enforce this? Would you, I mean, would we wait until the legislature makes its decision to kind of talk about those details? Yeah, I mean, I, I can tell you that, um, you know, there's, a, there's a, um, a list that gets reviewed and updated every, you know, on an ongoing basis um, through the, through the um, uh, nuclear test ban folks um, that monitor and monitor, you know, companies and monitor, you know, subsidiaries and changes in corporate um, structure. Um, and monitor uh, federal defense contracts and, um, and put out a list every year of who the identified companies are. Um, and so probably I would assume that we would um, 
use that list as a monitoring tool and uh, to police whether, in fact, someone who did bid on a contract or uh, was bidding on the, you know. So essentially, you're not asking for self-disclosure or anything of those along those lines. You're simply comparing well, names we would, on a list. Yeah, we would put we would um, we would most likely put something in our um, RFPs as well. Um, much like we do with wage theft now, that we now say that you know you have to certify that you are in compliance with wage laws. So we would probably you know pursuant to that um, regulation the, uh, and pursuant to that chapter of state law, if it becomes state law. But the RFPs won't actually include something where they have to certify that they do not um, engage in any way. The RFP, but we could certainly ask them in the bid documents, you know, to certify. I mean, when you if you submit a bid um, under the penalties of pain, you know, pains of penalties of perjury, you are basically agreeing that you're going to comply with all the aspects of the RFP. Um, so, you know, you could have an affirmative checkoff like that, like we've done with other things. And, um, but obviously, we'd probably be also trying to monitor it. And so the, another question I have, just um, I don't know how practical this can be, but if, if for instance, the kinds of um, contractors that I imagine we would engage with that could potentially have some kind of connection to the production and so forth of nuclear weapons might be a construction company that has built you know, a garage for a plant where they're creating something or something along those lines. They seem like unlikely companies to show up in this list. Are so that's kind of why I'm asking about the details of how is there a disclosure piece? Is there, um, or are we just comparing to a list that gets put out once a year or something like that? When there, I think there are just all these kind of fine points that could be missed in terms yeah. of what companies have engaged in. I would tell you that I we I we um, I frankly we haven't really thought that far ahead yet. That would be you know obviously we have a long road to get the legislature to right, do which this. is why I asked at the beginning yeah. if it's yeah, time so to really ask have, these questions. I don't think we. Looked at it in that granular level of detail. We may be asked that, so we probably will be looking at that. Um, you know, again, um, I'm not <coughs> sure. I guess we'd have to be careful um, about you know if somebody builds a parking garage for someone that may not fit the description of actually working directly on on nuclear weapons or maintenance or. Um, but certainly, you can have people who build components. Um, I mean, a, a big one is Honeywell. Um, obviously, Honeywell is a major defense contractor, although I believe I've been told that they've now separated their consumer products, home products industry, and completely formed it off as a separate company. Because obviously, the city's bought lots of Honeywell controls and Honeywell, you know, thermom you know, uh, thermostats, et cetera. We all have probably, most of us have something made by Honeywell in our home, and they're also, a, you know, involved in the nuclear. Uh, but I believe they've now. Um, I think because of this kind of public pressure, have sort of sold off that division and, and separated it. So, um, but that would be the kind of thing we'd be looking for. Would and be computer specific. chips that are produced by exactly. companies that where the computer chips are mm -hmm. also used in yeah. their weaponry. I mean, there's so many. There totally are here, yeah. and I'm just wondering, you know, how granular will we get ultimately? Yeah. yeah, I can tell you though that the folks that monitor that. That put together that list are pretty granular. Okay. I mean, they're looking at DOD contracts, so they're they're drilling down pretty deep as well. Um, so, but th those are things we'll have to um, look at, for sure. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this order? No. Okay. Hearing none. Um, do we have a roll call, please? Thank you. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Goodwell. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. And yes. Thank you. That passes in first reading. Um, our next order is 19.115, an order relative to temporary stop signs on Fulton Avenue. <clears throat> this is upon the recommendation of City Council President Ryan, uh, um, Ryan O'Donnell and Councilor James B. Nash. Um, whereas Section 312-16 of the Code of Ordinances provides that, quote, for the purpose of trial, the City Council may make temporary rules regarding traffic or test under actual conditions signs, markings, or other devices. 
no such experimental rules relating to traffic shall remain in effect for a period longer than 120 days, end quote. And whereas Fulton Avenue is the location of New England Treatment Access NETA, a marijuana dispensary, and whereas NETA has greatly increased traffic on Fulton Avenue at, and at its intersections with Pleasant Street and Conn Street, <clears throat> and whereas the interests of the city are promoted by controlling traffic at the intersections of Fulton Avenue and Pleasant Street and Fulton Avenue and Conn Street, by installing stop signs on a temporary basis in accordance with section 312-16. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council hereby promulgates a temporary rule in accordance with section 312-16, placing a stop sign at the intersection of Fulton Avenue and Pleasant Street and a stop sign at the intersection of Fulton Avenue and Conn Street. Such temporary stop signs shall, for a period of 120 days, be deemed to have the force and effect of permanent stop signs approved for these locations. Any ordinance later enacted to establish a different rule shall immediately supersede this rule. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Um, so I'll just make a little note that, um, that the police chief, Chief Casper, and the DPW director, Lascalia, um, have identified an immediate need for a stop sign at this location, at these two uh, ends of the street, and are interested in having a permanent um, stop sign there, but to allow us to go through our normal procedure um, for an ordinance like this, uh, to go through that legislative process, what um, was decided is to put forward this order for a temporary stop sign so that that immediate need um, for safety could be um, dealt with and then this we could then move forward and have this go through transportation and parking and through legislative matters. Um, so that is my note on that. Um, <coughs> Councilor Nash, you may have further. I think you, you summarized it really well. That um, yeah, there were, that the, the the director of DPW and the police chief saw reason to uh, install <laughs> stop signs and um, and that um, and that you know there was interest in moving this forward quickly. And Councilor O'Donnell and I felt that you know that we have this avenue to install you know, traffic devices like this temporarily, and that, um, and then it gives us time to uh, actually go through our usual channels of seeking public input. Um, you know, I, I, I'm looking, for, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the discussion about the stop signs because they're, uh, they have to do with a bigger picture of what the traffic will look like around NETA at some point when the when the police detail goes away and um, and you know and I think it there's some bigger discussions to go along with that area more than just stop signs it's parking um, what it um, what the flow of it, it in fact at one point there was discussion of maybe making Fulton one way and so um, I you know I think we need to hear about how we arrived here and um, and in the meantime, uh, and I speak for Councillor O'Donnell here, we, we are definitely in favor of stop signs where needed and that we're not trying to block stop signs. Um, so, I, you know, I think I said it in a much wordier way than you, right? Not at all. So. Well done. Um, other <laughs> comments or questions on this? Yes, Councillor so, O'Donnell. Just, just, just to clarify that originally when I saw this, I wanted, well, this is such an emergency situation. How is it that we're in August and the traffic situation has been there since, what, January when they opened? But as I understand it, this is an anticipation of removal of police detail. Is that is that why it's you know, a I, of concern now? The mayor may have a better idea. I haven't had this discussion with, with the police chief, and I'm, you know, that through the Traffic and Parking Commission and, you know, it sounds like a Trojan horse ordinance. Since you're saying it's a stop sign, but it's going to be actually a, about all these other issues. So you may want to make sure you post that on the agenda if that's what you're going to actually talk about. It seems like you want to talk about more than the stop sign. So, um, but anyway, it's it's. Um, I must confess, there's a stop sign up now. So there is a stop right. sign that's been installed. So um, and actually, technically, if you took your driver's test, you know you are required to stop at the intersection of a minor street mm -hmm. with a major street. It's like the law, mm -hmm. um, and so, but there are some cases where we feel that there needs to be reinforcement just because of out of town and safety and volume, and so that's what this is about. But um, certainly those can be questions we can talk about, yeah. 
Yes. But, but, but democracy, so, 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 so the timing now, is it related to the- I think it was an anecdotal, I think the, the police that were there observing um, <coughs> uh, uh, reported back to the chief that they were seeing people that were basically just not realizing that uh, maybe because they're not from town that they um, may have come in one end of, of Fulton and that they needed to actually stop before they pulled out. Um, and so I think that was a concern is that they were concerned about potential um, traffic safety and traffic collision. So that's why they felt that it was a good candidate to have an actual physical stop sign as opposed to just the default, you know, de facto uh, rule that we're all supposed to follow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. For the chair. Well, just so that uh, um, I have no problem with the stop sign <coughs> at all, but in terms of whether a stop sign in that circumstance would be required to go through all of because all it is is a redundant sign. It's already just a, it's a reinforcing what's the existing law, yeah. the requirement to stop there. So but we do, we do have, if you look in the ordinance book, we do actually um, have designated where stop signs are located. Um, yes. And we don't always have stop signs in every, you know, intersect. We don't have stop signs most everywhere you're required right. to stop. Most yeah. places yeah. where you're required to stop don't have a stop sign. Exactly. Um, what we're doing is we're putting one up where, where one would be required to stop ordinarily as opposed to one on a through road that had um, minor, the, the major um, throughway would not have to stop the traffic coming in from the minor throughway without a stop sign. Yeah. A four-way stop, for example, or other yeah. stops like that. Okay. But I think it was more um, the feeling that we really needed to have a, a in this case, because of what they were witnessing, that they felt that we needed to have an actual affirmative sign there. Um, so As a reminder. Exactly. And again, I, I, you know, for those of us who live in Northampton, um, we probably wouldn't just like, you know, close our eyes and pull out onto Pleasant Street, you know what I'm saying? And like, that, you wouldn't do that, but there may not, you know, there may be people who are not from Northampton who apparently were. And I think they were concerned about, you know, near misses and such. So I think that's why they felt it was necessary. <clears throat> Councilor Klein. Uh, the question I have is more kind of um, uh, practical at a different level. If if the the need for this has come about because of Netta, um, first of all, we know that you know other stores, other pot shops are going to be opening in other places, and it, if it decreases the traffic, I mean, this is good that it's actually a temporary, at least for now. Mm -hmm because maybe traffic will actually kind of taper off there as people go to the other places. So um, I'm fine approving this here, but I think it just makes me think, are we kind of responding to something that won't ultimately be a problem? So just say that. Councilor Nash. I, I, I'd just like to say in relationship to the bigger picture of what's going on around NETA um, that Director Fiden shared with the TPC, I don't know, four months ago, five months ago, some ideas for, uh, you know, how traffic should flow around the intersection and that, um, and that I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, I want to have to ask the question, does this line up with the overall traffic plans that the city is drawing up? So, any other questions or discussion? No. Okay. In that case, um, Laura, when you get a moment. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Sarah. Yes. Councilor Kidwell. Yes. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Suspend the rule. Isn't there two ones on this one? Yes. Right, yes. Second. Okay. It's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion on suspending rules? All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. Aye. Objections? Motion approved and seconded. Second. Motion's been made and seconded for second reading. Any discussion? Um, Laura? Uh, Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Klein. Aye. Councilor Yes. Yes. Okay. That passes in two reading for the temporary stop sign that's already there. <laughs> um, uh, next, we're on to ordinances for referral 19.114, 
Lo and behold, relative to stop signs on Fulton Avenue, an ordinance. An ordinance of the city of Northampton, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton and city council assembled as follows. Section 1, that um, section 312-113 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Um, so this is the schedule. Uh, 12 stop and yield intersections and it's for at the location of Fulton Avenue in the direction of Southwest direction uh, at the intersection of Collins a stop sign and also on Fulton Avenue in the opposite direction going northeast uh, at the intersection of Pleasant Street a stop sign Move to refer. Move to refer. Yeah. or I'll second that motion it's been moved and seconded to refer um, any discussion on that referral? Was, is it just being referred to legislative Oh, sorry, good question. Oh, so, okay. right, so this is referral to legisl legislative matters, but we also would like it to go to Chairperson. Transportation and Parking Commission, anywhere else? Nope, so thank you, Laura, yes, uh, to refer it to both of those committees slash commissions. Okay, um, I can do a voice vote on a referral. Um, all those in favor of referring that ordinance? Aye. Aye. Any objections, abstentions, no? Okay, it has been referred. And our last item is um, 19.025, an ordinance to rezone five parcels from URC to CB, so that's urban residential C to central business and to include parcels in CBAD, central business architectural district, yes. Um, this is second reading, is there a motion? Make a motion. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion on the second reading? No. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Shira. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 That passes in second reading. Um, anyone have any new business or other items? No. Then. Move to adjourn. Motion's been oh, seconded. Sure. All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Aye.